Okay, kids, let's talk about why those things did what they did in the demonstrations. And it was actually Ben Franklin, big Ben Franklin. Good old Ben, good American. Yes, he was, good American. He was the one that first started doing electricity experiments. I mean, you probably have heard the story. He was out in a rainstorm, a thunderstorm with a kite and a key on it. And they actually did do that. He didn't die. He was actually kind of lucky he didn't die. But one, you know, some things he did do, though, another thing he did, a little more safe, is he took bunny fur, okay, like Fluffy, my cat here, similar to that. And he took a piece of glass. They had glass back in the 1700s. They did. They didn't have plastic back then. No. But they did have glass. And he rubbed glass and he took paper. Believe it or not, they actually had paper in the 1700s as well. And he did what I was just showing you. He, I was showing you that, you know, you rub this and you pick up the paper and voila. Okay, and he was wondering, well, why that happens? And so what he said is, this is what Ben said, Big Ben. Not, not, uh, not, not the, did you know Big Ben is actually not a, um, it's not a clock. No, it isn't. Everything is the clock. It's not. It's the bell. Big Ben's the bell inside the clock tower. Mm-hmm. Little fun fact for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, where was I? Oh yeah, Big Ben. So Ben Franklin said, "Okay, um, we he, the concepts of positive and negative in terms of mathematics were known in the 1700s, and he said that glass obtains a positive charge by rubbing it." with the bunny fur. Okay, you use bunny fur, you can use cat fur. Okay, bunny fur. And so if we rub the glass with the bunny fur, it gets a positive charge because it must be picking something up that it didn't have previously. You see, if we just have a regular piece of glass, okay, we'll neutralize this, then, you know, nothing sticks to it. Here's the nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, nothing. But if we take bunny fur we rub it once we adding something to the bunny fur and that makes it able to you know hold on to oh look at that okay pretty good and hold on to that piece of paper so we've added something so he said glass gets a positive charge okay now was he right or was he wrong he actually had a 50 50 shot at it at getting it right because you know it could be positive or negative maybe it was negatively charged but he was right, it was positively charged. No, he didn't know why. 1700s, they didn't know about electrons. They didn't know about electrons, electron transfer, all that stuff. No, that was 100 years away. In the late 1800s, J.J. Thompson, pretty cool name, J.J., um, discovered the electron. And he said, because he discovered it, okay, his choice, he said, I'm giving this subatomic particle, the electron, a negative charge. He could have said, could have said, the electron gets a positive charge. And today we'd be learning that electrons have a positive charge and protons have a, a negative charge. And would life be any different? No. Uh, no, no, the fact that we call them different things. But life still goes on. It doesn't make any difference. Nature doesn't care what you call it. Nature doesn't care if you call it positive or negative. Okay, people do that. So JJ said, electrons, negative. So we went, okay. Now, go back to Ben Franklin. Was he right about the glass being positive? Answer, he was. He got his 50-50 shot correct. He, based on what we know about subatomic particles, um, the glass does gain, uh, well, I should say it doesn't gain any, it loses. It becomes positive because it's losing electrons. The, subatom the molecular structure of glass is such that if you rub it, it will give its electrons up. So Ben was wrong about, it. oh, it's positive because it gained something. It added something to it by rubbing it. No, Ben, that was wrong. You were right by calling it positive, but not for the correct reason. Okay, it is positive because it loses electrons. Now, plastic, on the other hand, plastic and rubber, both plastic and rubber, their molecular structure, plastic and rubber both come from the same thing. They come from petroleum, you know. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you know that too. You're learning things, learning. Plastic, rubber, come from... Well, actually, um, synthetic rubber does. Real rubber comes from a rubber tree. Okay, that's different. But synthetic stuff, plastics, come from petroleum. Now, if you rub plastic, it becomes negative. Why? Because the material is such that it gains electrons very easily. So what happens is we get a negative charge with the plastic because it gains those electrons. Okay, so that's an important concept to know. Now let's go into the piece of paper. What happened with the piece of paper that it was, shoot, it jumped up to our, both our glass and our plastic for different reasons, but it did jump up to both. Yeah, we need to go over it. So here's a piece of paper. 
Okay, nice little piece of paper, hanging out, being a piece of paper, you know, doing what paper does, kind of chilling like a villain you. And so it's like Switzerland. Okay, it's nice and neutral. So we've got some negative charges and some positive charges. And I made equal amounts because we're nice and evenly distributed. Zero net charge, zero net charge. Okay, now we've got our, we'll start with the, let's go with the glass. Here's the glass. We have rubbed that glass, and so Ben Franklin was right. It does get a positive charge, but for the wrong reason. It actually loses electrons when you rub it. And so it gets a positive charge. So we'll put lots of positives in here. I'll put a negative in here. It doesn't mean it doesn't have negative charge. It still does. It just says it has now more positives than negatives. Okay, it's just unbalanced. Unbalanced in the force, Luke. All right, so now what happens? Well, here's the important thing, and you know this, you do deep down inside, you know, but you still maybe remember you know, but you know. I know you know, I, I know. It's the electrons that move, groove, shake, and bake, okay? It's the electrons that do this. The protons, nope, they don't do that, they're stuck. They're stuck in place, they're stuck in the nuclei. They can't go anywhere. They want to go somewhere, but they can't, they're stuck. The electrons have flowage ability. They can move around. Remember, they can jump energy levels. They can actually get kicked out, pulled away. The electrons do all the moving, grooving, and shaking, and baking. In the world of chemistry, chemistry is all about the electron. It's about what the electron does. Chemistry happens because of electrons move it. Boop, 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 boop. Right? Same thing is true here. Loosely held valence electrons. Remember that? Metallic bonding. Loosely held valence electrons. A sea of electrons. C of electrons. These loosely held valence electrons can move. They can shift. So if we have a positive, a very positive thing here, has such a good attitude, so positive. <laughs> if this positive thing is moving toward this neutral thing, the moving electrons can shift position. And what are they going to do? If you're an electron, this is a positive thing. You like that. Okay, it's a natural fact. Opposites attract. Yes, they do. And so these electrons will move. They'll shift position over here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what I've done is I shifted those electrons over because they can move. The protons can't move. Don't tell me the protons move. Don't, don't do that. So on uh, electrostatics questions, academic adventures, and I'm probing to see whether or not you know about protons and electrons and who moves and who doesn't. If you say, the proton ship, no, no, red marker, stab, stab, paper, stab, paper, red marker. Mm, no, no, they don't move. They're stuck, okay, Boop, stuck. The electrons can shift. What we've done, we created a dipole. We've created a dipole. Two ends, dipole, two ends. We have a dipole, that means this side and that's important too. You need to tell me that. I want to hear those words. Well, I want to see those words. I want to see the, the word dipole. We have created a setup a dipole. It's still neutral. Still neutral. But it's dipolar now. We've shifted the electrons to the side to the right. Negative. This side now is relatively positive. We've created that dipole situation. Now we get the stickage. This positive comes in, hits the paper, which has now shifted its electrons. Attraction, attraction. Now we get the stickage. Okay, that's when you see the piece of paper. You know, it's near that. Okay, here comes the rod. Hanging up paper. We'll simulate it here. I have a piece of paper hanging out, minding my own business, doing what paper does. Oh, rub this. Rub, 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 rub. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling something inside. Something's moving. Oh, what's going on? I don't know. Where are you going, electrons? Don't go over there. So, hey, what are you doing? Hey. Oh, look at that. Now we're attracted because we have this positive and negative. Okay, all right. The voices are for free. No charge for that, okay? No charge for that voice inflection. Then after a while, though, what can happen is the piece of paper... Well, eventually, you know, it doesn't take, actually, sometimes it can be very quick. It will fall off. It'll just fall off. Well, what's going on there? How come it'll fall off? Why doesn't it stick forever? Forever, like I love, forever. Okay. Why doesn't it do that? Well, pirates. 
Yeah, I, I said that. Pirate, like like Blackbeard, like um, Jack Sparrow, pirate, pirates. That's why. So what happens is the electrons shift, and these electrons can actually move, and they can jump. They can pirates. They can jump ship, right? Boarding ships. The electrons can move from this ship to that ship. So these electrons can go arg, 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 mighty, arg. We call it arging. It's an official thing. Arguing. You look it up in any physics dictionary, the word's there, arguing. But what that means is these electrons can jump higher, maybe. They can jump ship and go to this ship. Now, if that happens, when the electrons shift and latch onto it, because they, they, they want to go here, this is a positive thing. Remember, we, we rub the electrons off, so it's down electrons. So these electrons say, we'll help you. We'll go over to you and jump on you. And if they do that, then what happens is your piece of paper is no longer neutral. It is now charged. It becomes positively charged because it's lost some of its arguing electrons. Oh, you made it. Now you get repulsion. Ew. And so the piece of paper will shoom, boom, fall off. It's, you now it gets repelled. So that is the dynamics of what's going on. A lot of things are going on here. Oh, it's just a piece of paper sticking through the thing. It's so boring. Boring? Look at all the stuff that's happening here, people. It's awesome. All right. Now what happens if we have a piece of paper, nice neutral piece of paper? OK, draw equal amounts of positive and negatives. And we have a piece of plastic which has been rubbed. That's negatively charged. Not, it's not because we, we lost protons. You're not going to lose protons out of this thing. They're locked in the nuclei. You're not losing protons. Remember, protons don't move. But we gained electrons from the bunny fur that we rubbed it with. And now it has extra electrons. And so the same thing is going to happen here. We're going to create a dipole, but for the opposite reason. These electrons, this is very negative. These electrons go, ew, run away. They're like Sir Robin. Sir Robin, uh-huh, from uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Great movie. You haven't watched it. Doggone it. Go watch it right now. Right now. Go, go. Go watch it. Okay, did you watch it? It was pretty good. Remember Sir Robin? Sir Robin ran away. Sir Robin. I did not. I did not. They had the, the, the coconuts. Some of you are with me. So these electrons will run away. They'll be like, Sir Robin. They'll shift position over here as this negative object moves toward, we create a dipole again. Dipole. And then stickage. We get this sticking together. And we get the same effect. We can get the piece of paper. won't stick to the piece of plastic for very long. It will eventually just boom, will fly off of it. Well, why is that? Once again, arguing. Pirates. These, the, all, this is positive on this side now. This is negative. And so these electrons will go, arg, matey. And they'll jump on to the piece of paper, the positive side that they're attracted to, causing the piece of paper now to get a net negative charge, negative charge, net negative charge, and a negative charge here that repel each other. All right, lots going on, lots going on. You thought this was going to be easy, right? Easy. Okay, um, one more. We have to explain the electroscope, whether or not I used glass or plastic on the electroscope. Okay, so our electroscope looks like this. Okay, or stopper, metal thing, foil. Okay, we take a piece of uh, plastic, charged plastic. Negative, 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 lots of negatives. So what happens? Well, this is metal. You know that metal is a good conductor. I'd be a good conductor. Yes, I would. I would be an awesome conductor. It's a good conductor. That means electricity and heat, actually, can easily flow through it. Why is that? C of free floating our electrons. Remember, those electrons can move and shift in metals. They have a lot of loosely held valence electrons. Lo write that down. Loosely held valence electrons. Write it. You're not writing. Thank you. 
loosely held valve septum. So what happens is when we approach the pot, now the, the, the metal itself is neutral, positives and negatives in there are nice and balanced. If we move these negatives toward, the negatives in the metal can easily shift. Okay, it's, it's steel electrons, they float easily. So the negatives will shift down and they'll go away from this negative, they'll drive those negatives down into the pieces of aluminum, those little aluminum foil pieces, and now they're both negatively charged. You got a lot of negatives that got driven down there, repelled by the negative rod, and they go, oh no, don't like you. Don't like you either, so back at you. Mm -hmm. They talk to each other. I listen to them. I hear voices. I do. I hear voices. Okay. What if we have a positively charged rod? We saw the feet do this too. Same thing. Boop when we approach it with the positively charged rod. Well, in that case, what happens is the electrons are drawn to it. If they're drawn to it, the electrons are drawn out of the pieces of aluminum foil down here. And this now, the electrons are drawn out, so you get these positive pieces of foil down here. And positives don't like each other either. I don't like you. I don't like you. Whee! And they'll move away from each other. All right. Now, how far will they move away? It depends. Depends on how charged up the, the rod is, really. That's, that's what it is. It depends on how much charge does the glass or the plastic have. Oh, and going back to this, um, why is it that on a, 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 you never get static electricity stuff happening in the, in the summertime on a humid day. No, no. Well, what's the difference between the humid summer day and the dry winter day? You know, water. Water. We all remember from Chimica El Grande. That water, good old high quality, made in America, H2O, has a structure like this, it's got bed structure to it, and we all remember those unshared pairs of electrons in the Lewis diagram. I know, I'm bringing back some bad chemistry. Some of you are starting to shake, stop, stop it, please, stop. I know, I get it, just hang with me. And you end up getting this side of the water molecule as being very negative. Very negative. You don't want to hang out with this person. They just, they just took the half, this is the half empty people. So negative. Down here, we end up getting a positive as the electrons are drawn away. Electronegativity is much higher in the oxygen than the hydrogen. Draws electrons toward it. Two unshared pairs of electrons. Negative, positive end. Remember? You do. You remember. That's di so it's a polar molecule. We call it, it's, it's a dipole, which means it's polar. Same thing dipole and polar. And if we have a polar molecule, like water, you represent polar molecules with an oval with a positive and a negative. So water molecule is represented by an oval with a positive and any, any polar molecule is. Okay, well, so what? What does this have to do with staticky winter days and non-staticky summer days when it's humid out? Well, the water molecule has a positive and negative end. That means things are attracted to the positive end if you're negative. Yeah, if you're an electron, you're a negative. So if you're at a negative electron, there's some negative electrons kind of hanging out, chilling, like, because that's what static electricity is in the wintertime. There's extra electrons in the air. And if you pick those up, you now become charged, and you have a net static charge. So with these extra electrons, you get static electricity buildup. But if you're a water molecule and you're near these, this is what you'll, you'll hear. If you listen very carefully in the winter, in the summertime, you can hear water molecules doing this. Yeah, they do that. They will just suck these things right in. They'll go They'll draw those extra electrons, which cause the static, right into the water molecule. And they will try it. Mm -hmm. So these electrons get sucked up by the water molecule and taken out of the atmosphere. All right, taken right out of that atmosphere. You don't have them around, no static. In the winter time, it's much drier. The air, the air has, has, you know this, your skin gets dry, my hair gets all frizzy, split end, you know, it's terrible. I have to straighten it out. I use a hair straightener on my hair every morning. You see me without it, I have this fro, it's like out here. Pretty awesome. Where was I? Talking about my fro. Talking about fro, bro. Uh, oh, yeah, wintertime. Wintertime, you know it's dry out. 
All right, it's actually a saying, it's too, it's, it's too cold to snow. And well, there's something to that. If the temperatures get down like zero degrees, there's so little ability for the, the air to hold water vapor that you, it, it can't snow. Hence, too cold to snow because not enough water in the air. No water in the air? No. <laughs> no electrostatics. I mean, wait a minute, no water in the air, you can't get this, so you get electrostatics. In other words, if there's none of this, then you've got this hanging around, waiting to make your hair frizzy, waiting to zap you when you close the, the door to the car, and waiting when you rub your feet on the floor, with no socks, try it, try it, I mean, with socks, with no shoes, and then go and touch something metal, okay? It's good, clean fun, good, clean family fun. Okay, kids, we've got to wrap this video up. It's a 20-minute video, and you're all falling asleep on me. Okay, so we'll talk to you later.